Hi, my name is Paul Merritt, uh, better known as Paul the SSB. Uh, I use he, him pronouns. Uh, I'm going to be speedrunning Marvel Nemesis Rise of the Imperfects in uh, any percent category uh, for the GameCube. This game came out for the GameCube, the PS2, and the Xbox original. Uh, however, the GameCube uh, has the best load times and is the one that I'm familiar with. Um, there aren't any other uh, extreme differences across the platforms. However, there is a PSP and DS version of the game, and they are completely different from the home console version. So, we go into the story mode, we're going to do continue, and we're going to restart the game. Um, you may have noticed that I uh, do not have autosave on, and this is technically New Game Plus. And the reason we do that is because that cuts out a lot of um, time from the game automatically. Uh, after you're uh, completing a mission, you unlock that character, or that stage, or that comic book, and that eats up excessive time. We can cut out easily some, you know, I don't know, four minutes maybe, something like that. It's like uh, 10 seconds per level. Um, and then couple that with the autosave is, a, is another time save for free. Anyways, this game has been speedrun for the past 10 years, but over the last couple of years, it's actually got some new uh, groundbreaking tech, uh, some new sequence breaks, some new glitches. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just kind of exploded and the community has been really, really helpful at pushing this game uh, down in time. Um, 10 years ago, uh, when I ran this in high school, uh, the best time was an hour and 47 minutes. Now it's 57 minutes, um, and it could definitely go down further. I mean, I have my splits on there right now, and my sum of best is 48 minutes. It could go down further. Um, I think we would need a, a significant breakthrough. However, I think GDQ is a really great opportunity to show off what we've been able to accomplish thus far, and maybe get more people into the game to push it down even further. So with that, I'm going to start the first mission, which is The Thing's Invasion. Uh, the aliens have invaded uh, New York. Uh, the thing is just kind of wandering on the Brooklyn, Bl Brooklyn, Bridge. Brooklyn Bridge, and we are going to take out these, these aliens. Dodge plus attack is not only a very strong way of taking out these little uh, squishy enemies, but also um, very unlikely that they will block it, because when you dodge, they don't anticipate you're going to attack them. So, combining those together is very, very strong. Here we're just going to do a dash attack, break through this barrier, and then we're going to get our first boss fight, which is against a decapitator, which is then just going to be a regular reoccurring enemy. We're going to dash attack off of the ledge and go straight for this car. And then this car, and there we go. Sometimes that can happen. Uh, basically, when you throw objects in this game, it does a lot of damage, and sometimes it can hit twice for some reason. Um, I, I don't know the full details, but we always welcome that little surprise. We have our first mission with Wolverine. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, the thing, uh, that one mission where we play as a thing, that's the only mission where we play as a thing. Uh, in any percent, you only have to play one mission as him. But now we get to do our first major sequence break of the game, which is Barrier Skip. Let's see if I can get it. That's okay, we have a backup track where we uh, super grab this enemy on the other side, and then we just go on merry way. Ooh, that's really bad. That barrel's not supposed to explode that early. Um, we're gonna have to improvise here. Now we have a lot of enemies to deal with, and we don't know which ones we have to kill. I don't know which ones I'm meant to kill here, because typically all of them blow up from that dumpster, but we don't have access to that dumpster. Um, that should do it though, I think. No, it's this guy? Is the last guy? Okay. That was unfortunate. I'm going to restart the run. Uh, should I restart the run? No, 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 no. We're going to play it off. These things happen. These things can happen at marathons, and we need to be ready for it. Anyways, moving on, house party. Wolverine's got to investigate these aliens further, so he goes to the Avengers Mansion and finds that they have already overrun the place. We're also going to be introduced to wall running, something several characters can do, uh, Wolverine being one of them. You would think when he has access to his own mansion, well, I guess it's not his own mansion, but when he has access to it, he probably knows how to disable those lasers. I think what happened is the aliens, like, you know, hotwired it or something. Um, I'm not a security expert. <laughs> okay, 
We want to uh, not enter rage here. We want to jump and then hit R. So we don't need rage for this. Just kind of waste time going into the animation to get rage. We just want to kill these guys as fast as possible and then figure out which hallway we're closest to because uh, the hallway we're closest to after dealing with these enemies is where the enemies were required to kill will spawn. You know, that's a little bit hard to understand, maybe. Uh, a little bit clunky on the phrasing, but there's two optional enemies, and they spawn in uh, whichever hallway you're from. Uh, whichever hallway you're from. So we're gonna pick up these two enemies, kill them with a collateral, excellent. And we're gonna pick up this jewel case. We're already holding R, so we don't have to worry about entering rage. And then we're just going to air throw uh, the remaining marauders. Remaining mar marauders. Try saying that five times fast. Get that one on spawn. Get that one on spawn. And we're good. That's the whole mission. A little bit sloppy in the midsection, but you got to see all the strategies. You got to see a collateral. You got to see air throws. I think that was a pretty good demonstration of house party overall. Femme Fatale is a very interesting mission. For a while, this was a really long mission, and we didn't know any way of making it faster. At various health intervals, uh, uh, Wink will start teleporting around the room and throwing barrels, and we're going to make sure she doesn't do a single one of those uh, barrel phases. Fade her over here, and start doing our infinite. There we go. So it's not technically a true infinite, but the AI doesn't know how to block alternating uh, super attack with normal attack and not finishing it. Uh, by not by when you get that third hit of a combo attack, uh, you launch them, and that can deal uh, knockback as well as damage from them hitting the ground after, and we don't want that. We want to whittle down her shield without dealing any uh, real damage to her, uh, so that we can convince her that she still has a lot of health because she can always regain it back. Uh, and that way she doesn't do her barrel phase, and that way we can push her down so that she's in danger and we can use a fatality or a finisher. We got our first mission with Electra, and we get to uh, repent for our mistakes and maybe hit a barrel, uh, I mean not barrel, a uh, barrier skip. Let's see if we can do it. Nice, first try. So by hitting that barrier skip, there's no barrier at the end here, so we can just simply run to the end. So, I didn't explain Barrier Skip before because I didn't execute it properly, but basically you initialize a wall run and then immediately interrupt it, so you like barely hit L and then immediately stop hitting L. Um, and what I think happens, don't quote me on this, I'm not a developer for this game, uh, but the game tries to estimate where that wall run would put you and then offset you to that position. Like it kind of predicts where you would end up based on where you started. And because we uh, ended instantly, it just sends us there. Here, we're gonna go out of bounds a little bit. Okay, we almost fell to our death there. Yeah, that should be high enough. There we go. We were a little slow, so an invader might spawn in front of me. It didn't. That is the top of the world. You don't have to kill any of the enemies. Uh, typically, what the game wants you to do is kill all the enemies so that a wall breaks down and you can just walk through and then kill more enemies and then kill the Turlin engine at the end. Uh, what we can do is just go out of bounds and then kill the Turlin engine. Simple as that. Um, I made it look pretty easy. It's actually pretty precise to do uh, those uh, wall flings and whatnot. But anyways, first official uh, boss battle. We gotta beat Daredevil, and the best way to beat Daredevil is to convince him that uh, jumping off is a good idea. So, we're gonna block right over here, and he's going to do a swing attack right off the edge. Uh, basically, by blocking right over there, we uh, hide behind the Daily Bugle sign and cut off his line of sight. And because of that, he kind of overshoots his target and falls off the edge. Uh, there are backup strats if you can't hit that. Obviously, you can do air grabs off of the edge, or you can use a normal uh, throw near the edge. Um, but we got a first try. Now! We have our first sacrifice mission, and we have to kill the thing. We're playing as one of the imperfects, one of the villains of this game. So the basic gist for this, uh, in terms of strategy, is uh, use wall run super dives and use heavy objects to deal as much damage as possible. Combining these two, you can make very quick work of the thing. He's not very good. 
Did I get hit by that explosion? Yes. Do I care? Uh, okay, maybe I actually do care. I'm getting bounced around a lot. It's not fun. We have a few really, really strong attacks, and uh, ideally, we can push him. Oh my gosh, he never does that. Um, ideally, we can push him down with a super wall dive into a super grab so that we can get our finisher. Uh, but if we can't get that, then we can just kill him by traditional means. And there we go. We got a jab into our super grab, which is a very common way of confirming your fatality. Um, oftentimes, when an enemy is in range of getting fatality, they will continually throw tech, which is to say they will spam throw and you'll never get it in. You'll never execute your fatality uh, because they'll just throw tech. Um, but if you do a regular attack or a super attack first, they will usually drop their guard and let you finish your combo. And because of that, you can just combo into a super grab and execute your fatality. Now, we play as Daredevil, who is an actual fun character to play as uh, because he has mobility. Which is to say, he can swing. Uh, normally, we try to get a drop kick on one of those enemies, but we didn't get it. One thing you'll see me do a lot as Daredevil is a rising air super, like this. You slide your thumb uh, after uh, hitting the jump button. Uh, missing that throw. And it's very, very strong. It's very, very fast. It can be a little bit tough to execute when you're still learning it because it does require a very specific flick with your thumb. Um, but you can claw it. You can, you can learn it. It's, uh, it's not too bad. Now we're going to enter Rage so that we don't have to worry about how much energy we're consuming and we're going to continue to take out this next wave of invaders. What's nice about uh, being a mobile character in the air is that you can do air recovery. So when you get launched, you can uh, just start swinging instead. Trying to get far enough so that I can use my, there we go, my regular super attack, um, so that I can launch him. I was too close, so the game wanted me to do my super attack combo instead. We deny that invader from throwing an AC unit, we immediately uh, throw that decap, and then we just kill this invader and move to the other side. You may notice that I know exactly what these invaders want to pick up. Um, they always gravitate toward the same object, so it's not really any secret. Whip this guy off and then enter rage. Uh, now's a good opportunity to enter rage because we're waiting on enemies to you know, finish dying. Ah, uh, he hit the pole. That can happen. That's uh, unlikely, but that can happen. We're just gonna stagger some super attacks to take him out, and then we're gonna move around like that, and then turn around, do a super grab to take care of him, and then maybe if we get the right angle. All right, that works. Typically, I like to do a rising air super to take him out, but getting that angle can be a little bit difficult. You usually have to kind of pre-plan your positioning. Um, all of the spawns are predetermined, so you get a lot of uh, chances to plan out how you want to execute things. Next mission is Daredevil. We got to uh, kill lots and lots of enemies while um, uh, bombs are set to go off, so we have a timer. Um, this is a really good mission for donations because it's basically just wave after wave and not much to talk about. There are a couple other missions in the run that are really good donation uh, opportunities, um, and I'll talk about that when we get there. But we're basically just going to be doing more uh, rising air supers, regular combos, um, picking up objects where it's uh, appropriate. Um, and then we get a cutscene that introduces this new guy, so I'm going to enter rage and have the rage cutscene get interrupted. And now that I have maximum energy, I can just kind of wail on, wail on him. That's the word I was trying to say, him. Um, do more rising air supers to take out the rest of the enemies. Another couple more. And then we're going to jump up here and do a landing attack. We missed, that's okay. I'm gonna come around here and uh, try to take out this shooter. Ah, damn it. Um, dang it. I don't know. <laughs> Dang it, I wanted to uh, throw that at the guy really far away from me, but that's okay. We have alternate ways of dealing with him. Like that. Then I'm going to try and line up this. It didn't quite work. However, I do get both of these guys coming downstairs with me. Oh my gosh. Okay. Up 
of that slow motion replay. By the way, it's now a pretty good time to mention that I have no influence on whether we'll get a slow motion replay for something that I do. Um, it's purely RNG, um, with, like, one exception. I guess he fell down there? There's another enemy somewhere. I'm not sure. Oh, hey. He teleported to me. Sometimes, uh, if enemies don't know how to get to you, or they're really far away, they will just teleport to you. Which can be helpful. We're gonna wait for this invader to come downstairs and join me. Uh, he can get a little bit confused in terms of elevation, and I don't want to waste time jumping up there for him to jump down here. Um, okay, he might actually want me to do that. Like, do that. like if he desperately needs me to do that. Um, where on earth? Oh, he was hugging that pillar. Nice, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Anyways, we have a lot of energy, so now we can do our rising air super very easily. We don't have to do a, a really difficult uh, thumb flick because we're just holding down R to do a super jump and then doing a super attack as opposed to doing a normal jump and a super attack. And that's Scorched Earth. We had a little bit of AI frustrations, but that's something that you do need to prepare for in this game. The AI is wacky. All kinds of wacky. Anyways, we have a boss fight, and not an easy one. If you've played this game casually, you know that this boss fight is hard. Basically, Johnny Ohm is sa uh, siphoning electricity from the clock at Grand Central Station, and you have to get rid of it if you want to inflict any kind of real damage here. But we don't need to do damage. All we need to do is convince him to join us over the abyss over here. What's really nice about swing characters is they don't consume a lot of energy when they're using their mobility. Um, so we can basically swing here forever. Not exactly forever, but for a really long time. And our goal is to just kind of cut off his line of sight and wait until he joins us. Look at that. There he goes. Usually it doesn't take him that long to get over there, but with the AI in this game, there's only so much prediction you can do. Okay, for this mission, I do need to mention an epilepsy warning uh, should be advised. Because these Turlin engines explode in such a horrifying sight to the eyes. And there's nothing I can do about it. Except just say when it's over. Paragon is the best character in the game. I don't think it's a competition. Um, not only does she have, like, insane stats, she has mobility, she has a full-screen projectile, um, she can heal off of her super grab, she can teleport, she is insane. I don't think it really needs to be... I mean, I can keep stressing it because I like stressing it. She's nuts. By combining her regular attack into a super attack finisher, we can cleave off a lot of these Turlin engines together, which can save time and isn't very energy uh, consuming. This is the last section where we're going to be destroying these Turlin engines, after which we're going to be sequence breaking and skipping the uh, final set that you would typically break. Finish off these last ones using uh, rising air supers, then head into the next room. And here is the earliest glitch we ever discovered for this game. Which is that you can clip right through that barrier and uh, trick the game into thinking that you reached the victory plane. I think the reason for this is similar to the wall run in that the game estimates where you're going to end up uh, and then tries to offset you there. Um, and in this case, it offsets you momentarily into the victory. Now, we have a really cool glitch for Return Home, and it's hard to explain. This is a good time for couch commentary. One, two, three. And I can explain it after as well. I just want to make sure I got it. I want this guy to throw his barrel. Good boy. Nice. I think that hit it. Cool. So. What we do there is we strip off all of the armor plating of the Turlin engine, and then we use a drop kick from high enough uh, so that uh, Storm is stuck doing her drop kick while the cutscene plays. And we think for some reason she ends up drop kicking the second Turlin engine as well, which makes the vic makes the game uh, the mission instantly end. Normally, there's a second Turlin engine you're meant to defeat, uh, but we don't care about that. 
For this level, um, as you're going into the loading screen, it's important not to hold the analog stick in any direction because you can influence uh, these enemies spawning before you're ready, and because of that, they can get separated and be harder to uh, take out together. Oh yeah, I haven't mentioned, but we're playing a Storm. Storm is uh, pretty cool. It's a shame that all of her missions are incredibly easy. And we don't want to enter rage because we don't need it, and it can take time to uh, enter the rage cuts here. We just want to air grab and aerial projectile these guys as much as possible. The reason I say aerial projectile as opposed to flying projectile is while a flying projectile is stronger, it's um, it's uh, less accurate on flying enemies. They tend to dodge it. And there you go. That is house call. Pretty easy. Uh, there's actually two invaders that we don't have to kill, um, but it's a little bit hard to tell which ones when there's like other invaders around. They're not color-coded or anything. You just have to kind of watch their positioning. But since there's so many slow-mo replays, it's hard to keep track. Bit of a personal excuse, but um, uh, it is worth mentioning. Now, it's time to kill Fault Zone. You may remember her from uh, killing the thing, so we're getting revenge. And the way that we do that is just by flying over this abyss, Fault Zone thinks that she can join us, she cannot, she cannot fly, and then she dies. Now we have Death by Fire, which is another sacrifice mission and another boss fight, and probably one of the goofiest uh, boss fights in this game. You thought that convincing uh, the AI to jump off of a bridge uh, is goofy? You have not seen Goofy. So SLR, we're immune to fire damage, so we're going to try and bait Daredevil into this flame over here. And then we're just going to watch. And that's it. Uh, epilepsy warning again. Yeah, this particular um, uh, victory screen, because of the fire, can be a little awkward. I may try to move away from the fire uh, just in case of that, but I can't really guarantee it. And it could potentially jeopardize how quickly I can beat Daredevil there. We have our first mission as Venom. Venom is probably my favorite character to play as. Uh, he's just really, really fun and hits really, really hard, and uh, he's Venom. I'm gonna be using a lot of um, objects as well as um, uh, sw uh, sling attacks from the ground. Swing attacks, uh, not only are they really good at auto-aiming onto the target, but also they go super fast, and they go all the way across the room. Uh, got stuck on the ceiling there. Try and move into here and activate rage. Nice, we did it. Okay, good. The reason we want to do that is because we want this enemy wave to spawn in, but we also want to make sure that we have like as much energy as we might need, which is a lot. We're actually getting kind of bullied right here. It's a little super block to shake them off. What I was trying to do is get some grabs while in this hallway because it's a really easy setup for collaterals, which you can use to get easy kills on these uh, invaders and even do a lot of damage on the decapitators as well. Um, but sometimes things don't exactly go the way you want and you need to be ready for it in a game like this. I saw that guy catch the object, so I immediately shot it out of his hands. Um, I meant to do a regular grab, but a super grab is fine too. I think he just shot his friend. We'll take that. Okay. I saw that there's a guy in the hallway, so I'm gonna go join him over there. <laughs> of course. Nice. We're gonna aerial recover out of that because we don't want to get pushed into the electric barrier. Just a lot of excessive damage for no reason. I'm gonna enter Rage here because I'm getting a little bit fed up with how aggressive these enemies are, and I just want this level to be done. Kill, and then there's one more enemy. Oh my gosh, he's blocking a lot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I've never been in such dangerous health, uh, but wow. Uh, he really didn't want to get killed. Um, honestly, respect. Seek and Devour is a really long mission. Another good spot for donos. 
Uh, but it's also a very precise mission. I try to be very methodical with how I treat the packs in this level. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm mostly going to go quiet here while I focus. pretty quickly, which I'm pretty confident I can. makes up a lot for how badly that is going. Um, I'm not going to get there in time, but I'll try. Ah, I hit that on the point. That can happen. There's only so much you can do about that. TBH. Nice. That usually doesn't home in on the right spot, but it did. Let's see if we can get both. We got one. Um, we could actually use it. We're a little bit low on health. It's important to, um, you know, kind of play by ear because you can get, you can take a lot of object damage out of nowhere in this game. Um, so you do kind of just want to keep an eye on your health and decide, make a judgment call for yourself. And it's not a significant time loss to grab health, so don't feel too proud to do it. Nice, we got two health price of one, I think. That might be not good. We actually healed from it, which is rare. Usually when you kill a Trillin engine with an object, you don't heal from it. Okay, we're gonna bait these guys into jumping off. We usually get two, but if we get three, that'd be super cool. We do get three. Come down here. Ooh, wow, that was juicy. Oh crap, that was good. I'm gonna enter Rage here because the cutscene's gonna interrupt it anyways. This uh, cutscene happens in the real game, so you do need to watch out, make sure you're out of that quick range. And then you just want to kill that guy as soon as you can. Do the same thing we did with those decaps. Let's see, we should be able to get two at least, hopefully three. I don't see where the third one is. Okay, he just teleported in. He jumps. Uh, but he is a coward. Sometimes enemies are cowardly, and you need to find a new way to kill them. Thankfully, we have a semi-truck. They cannot catch semi-trucks. Except I barely missed. <laughs> okay, we stomped him with the semi-truck. Excellent. I did, uh, have a pretty slow go of Seek and Devour, and a lot of it was because of the lamp post and SUV stuff on the first few packs. Like I said, I'm pretty methodical with how I do that mission, so... Sometimes uh, it, things can go wrong. I do have backup strats, as you could tell, but sometimes things can go wrong. It's a long mission. A lot can happen. Fatal Heat. We have a boss fight. Okay. We want to cut off her LOS because she has a lot of energy. We want to make sure that we can uh, kill her pretty easily. 
We don't want her to shoot us a bunch, especially because fire damage does a lot to the Spidey boys. Wow, that object hit her three times. And just like that, we have made up for lost time. Uh, we take those. Um, that's a thing that can happen in this game. This game is full of happy little surprises. Lethal Toxin, it's time to say goodbye to Venom. Unfortunately, he had a good run of it, but we do need to uh, watch him uh, go into the chasm. It's not the last we're going to see of Venom, because we actually have to kill him one more time as Spider-Man. Um, but we'll give him a minor setback until that uh, until that comes. There we go. Uh, this next mission, Maya's Dilemma, is another really good spot for Donos, because it's just like wave after wave of enemies. There's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of repetition with using her two normal attacks into a super attack finisher, um, and I don't think there's a whole lot that has to be covered. So, it's another really good spot for donations, like two minutes. Paragon, if you enter Rage while facing the left, even a little bit, um, you know, get a cutscene. They didn't program her facing the left for them. Um, there's only two specific enemies we need to kill for this barrier to clear, but any enemies that you leave uh, standing will show up in this next pack, so it's nice to kill as many as you can. Uh, sometimes you can get a two piece, sometimes uh, Paragon just wants to break the barrel over their head. Do what you can with, with what you can do. Nice. Like I said, any enemies that you've left untouched will make their way in this path, but we need to get work of them. Here we just want to push through these barriers as fast as possible. Didn't mean to do that landing attack, but that's okay. We have plenty of energy for the climb. These four enemies are the only ones left over that are required. Also, just climb that traditionally just by holding R and going up, but it takes a little bit longer. Now we get to play as Spider Man, which I think most people are excited about. And the first mission, in all of its glory, uh, we have to kill 11 computers. I don't mean AI, I mean literal computer terminals. It's not very exciting, even though it's called Spider Man. The way that we start out is by draining our energy a little bit so that we don't have to worry about accidentally grabbing enemies instead of objects. Basically, just keep checking these around the room. Occasionally, we'll do some swing attacks. Oh, we can ignore every enemy in this mission. They're completely a waste of time. As soon as you hear that the uh, timer has started for one of these computer consoles to uh, blow up, you can safely move on, except for the last few, because these timers do take a while to actually go into effect. So you do want to confirm that they actually do die before you move on, or that they will die. For these last ones, we're just going to charge into them, or get some assistance from Desolators and Marauders. There we go. Not the fastest, but decent. Airlift is a scary mission, and I'm going to be quiet at least until I secure the first helicopter for the most part another good opportunity for couch commentary or donos to take over because this mission is scary it's definitely a run killer mission there's like a couple more of these later
Oh, that was so beautiful. One taxi, eight invaders. That is the best case scenario. And now we're basically uh, in a pretty safe spot here. Just wanna get more collaterals. I think that's everyone. Wow, that was incredibly good. Um, yeah, all right, we, pre we protected the first helicopter with no issues. Now we do the second one, and the second one we uh, have a little bit more freedom in how we want to approach it, which is the same with the truck. Should be okay. Usually I don't let the car hit the helicopter directly, but there I did. I think we'll be fine anyways. They're all dead. Last guy, a predator. And we take care of him. And that's it. Wow, that helicopter was close to breaking, but that's okay. That was uh, one of the best airlifts I've ever had. Um, just incredibly good. Uh, Deadly Venom, it's time for us to kill Venom again. Um, you know him, you love him, you hate to see him go, but you love to watch him leave. It's time to kill Venom. This thick, juicy boy. And the way that we do it on the Daily Bugle is we uh, super jump up and then just start swinging through this little uh, crack between the Daily Bugle signs. And we just keep swinging out here. Wow, I've never seen him do it like that. He took a barrel and jumped off holding the barrel, and he can't uh, swing when he does that. Normally, he'll swing out there, and uh, Venom is very heavy, so he falls very rapidly while he swings, but uh, that's how he does it. All right, high voltage. I'm going to be quiet because I need to count. Or I can't tell where I am, but I think I made it. I made it. Perfect. Wow, that was lucky. Um, now we basically wait until Spider-Man finds the little wedge between the signs. He swings out here. We can grab him. We can ignore him. He's gone. Uh, the counting I do is because it takes about four seconds, maybe like four seconds, 200 milliseconds, to get into the perfect position where you're... Um, floating on top of an object out of bounds at such a height where you cannot, uh, where you don't ring yourself out. All right, and uh, because he loses a lot of energy when he flies normally. All right, for this mission, we hold up and right on the load screen so that we can spawn uh, directly under where we usually spawn. It's a little bit weird, but I discovered this once. Um, and then we go and we pick up this rock, we throw this rock at the target, and then we wait. Or the turtle engine, not the target. I say target kind of as like a uh, a, a, a quick short name. Um, but basically we have uh, uh, five uh, turtle engines we need to defeat because these are bombs apparently now. Sometimes they're health, sometimes they're bombs. Then you get a lot of assets for this game. Um, that is a, a weird quirk with Human Torch that I could point out. When he does an aerial recovery, sometimes he's stuck and cannot act for a few seconds. Sometimes he can act instantly. Um, so it's worth keeping in mind when you're speedrunning this game. Um, if you're at a position where you think you should aerial recover, or if you should just kind of play it off. Torchbearer is a long mission, a good dono mission, but also a bit of a run killer in a particularly dangerous uh, part of it. Um, so I'm mostly going to, like, I'll, I'll, I'll probably chit-chat a little bit, but when we get to the scary room, I'm going to be quiet. So we're going to be picking up a lot of these poles. They look like toothbrushes, so I usually call them toothbrushes. Uh, and we're going to be cleaving down enemies as best as we can. Um, unfortunately, they didn't group up there, so I didn't really get to cleave them, but I still got to use the toothbrush a lot. And it's important to brush your teeth, so, you know. Happy. Alternatively, that is another good way that you can deal with those enemies. I'm gonna pop rage here because I'm waiting for these guys to spawn in anyways, and then I'm gonna pick up a barrel, chuck it at the two that are grouped up. Usually when Ravagers spawn, they sidestep immediately, which inevitably uh, lines them up with another enemy, so you can get some nice and juicy weapons. Wow, that was a nice combo. Good synergy, go. good, good, good synergy, boys. All right, uh, that should be everyone. Hello. Oh, it's because the first Ravager didn't die when he was supposed to, so the uh, spawn time just got a little bit. Jumps down, he does. Nice. 
use more toothbrushes. It's important to use toothbrushes on Ravagers as soon as you're able because they will shoot it out of your hands. It's a very uh, worrisome concern. Wow, that completely ripped. But that's okay. We're gonna get up and immediately go into rage so that we can be very, very um, uh, freeform with our energy usage. When you're flying, you're a little bit more accurate with your shots if you're holding down the B button. Uh, that is to say, you're rising while you're uh, flying. Um, so I will do that if I'm in rage, because it uses a lot of energy otherwise. Kind of a rage exclusive thing to worry about, but also if you're at a significant range, it might be easier to land your shots by holding it now. Last guy, I'm gonna let him drop down here, uh, and then chuck this at him. And then I'm gonna stagger some super attacks. Okay, I messed up the stagger, that's okay. But also, he got a little bit out of range, kind of ruined it. It's kind of on him, kind of a, kind of a... Kind of his fault, if I'm being honest. All right, we move into this room. This is the dangerous room. just completed a guide to help players get started on any percent. So if you're interested in learning this game and anything that I've said has been like brushed over really quickly, I highly recommend um, checking the guide section on speedrun.com um, so you can learn more about this game. It, uh, it definitely works uh, if um, you know exactly what mission you're struggling with um, because uh, that way you can just control F the, the mission name and immediately find the guide that you need. So, that was a good torch bear. The end was a little bit sloppy, but, you know, I had to give my spiel. Old friends, uh, we have to fight the thing. The thing has been corrupted. You thought he was dead, but no, he's just corrupted. I don't really get it either. Um, we have to defeat him and uh, get our friend back. So we're going to do that. Wave dash in because he gave us a good pattern, and then he immediately ruined it. Um, we'll see if we can make it work anyways. No, not really. He's kind of a jerk. We gotta smack some sense into our friend here. Ooh, or he'll smack some sense into himself. That's okay. Pick up this object and throw it at him. He might reflect. That's nice. He didn't. We're gonna keep bullying him with objects and maybe go for a finisher if we feel inclined. I think he's dead to this. That was old friends. That was pretty fast. We try to bully him with objects as well as the electric walls on the stage um, as much as we can and prevent him from healing. Um, he can heal if he gets down into the lower deck. Um, so we just want to make sure that we, he, we don't let him. Along came a spider. We are going to uh, kill the human torch as Spider-Man, which is pretty difficult. Um, so I'm going to focus up for this one. Wow, that object hit him three times. It hit him while he was grounded, smashed him into a wall and hit him again, and then I think crushed him right after that? I, I, cool. Excellent. Yeah, that mission can sometimes just end. Um, anyways, now we get to play as Iron Man. Iron Man uh, is a very strong character, um, but they also give him some really hard missions uh, to kind of balance that out start off, we're going to pick up this jewel case. We know that a decapitator is spawning over here. We're going to jump shot after. Uh, I'm going to pick up this spear so that I don't have to waste too much energy. I'm going to take the spear and recycle it. Always good to recycle folks. Pick up another jewel case, and when this guy gets up, we'll throw it at him. 
and then we'll just shoot him and he's dead. Uh, over here, you can do something really cool with Iron Man's homing attack. However, I don't like it. I prefer using a javelin and taking them all out together like that. But nice, we were able to take them out really quickly, and that's all that really matters. Now that we're in rage, we do have the shortest rage window of all the characters, but we can still really take advantage of it because Iron Man um, can infinitely uh, shoot airborne um, uh, energy blasts when he's in rage, which is very strong, as you might imagine. Got our input eaten a little bit there. Okay. Give this guy a whole world tour of the mansion. Into the wall. Stomp on him. And he's gone. Ah, dang it. And he picked it up. That was mine. Do you want to watch our energy as we finish up these last couple of waves? Uh, because we want to have at least enough energy to do a super draft in the next section. But I think we're doing fine. I'm gonna let these guys come to me a little bit. Uh, pick up this pillow. It's on the other side. I might hit him. Nah, it just breaks the other pillow. I'll just shoot him. I've had enough of them. There's a decapitator over here, so I'm gonna use this pillar since I have it. Wait for him to get in close where he's already committed and he can't dodge. We're gonna use a collateral here to take out the decapitator and the invader, and then we'll just punch this other invader. And stop. And punch. Okay, next section. Here I like to do something a little bit stylish. Let's see if I can hit it. Ah. Usually, uh, when I hit that stylishly, I'm doing a super grab while falling. So we're just kind of like falling and holding in the clutches. And I think, I think it's really kind of goofy and kind of swag. Um, you be the judge. Wow. Instantly did a uh, reflector. Okay. If that's the case, I'm just going to bully all of your friends. Remember, kids, bullying is okay if the targets are trying to destroy the world. The only other thing we need to do in this mission, besides kill everyone, is destroy the computer because they've corrupted it. Um, and uh, antivirus doesn't work in this universe. Rage here to get out of that cutscene really fast, and then we're just going to uh, lay waste to these guys. Like I said, when you're doing airborne projectiles, you can just keep spamming those projectiles and you will never fall, you will continuously shoot. Iron Man is a menace when he has rage, and he should not be allowed in public spaces. Call of Heroes. We have to protect two satellite dishes as Iron Man, uh, which is pretty easy. Pretty easy. Um, and there's some cool stuff you can do. So uh, hopefully I can show that off. Let's see. Start by picking up this AC unit, and grab the telephone pole, Let's see if I can take out this sign. Uh, unfortunately, the telephone pole collapsed at one swing, usually you can get two swings out of it. I wasn't as lucky. So we'll just finish it off with a dive attack, which hits multiple times. Uh, and you'll see why we want to take out that Daily Bugle sign in a bit. Oh, I was a little bit off my mark there. I think I threw him off the map. Couple more invaders, and then we'll get to the real meat and potatoes. All right, meat and potatoes. Um, I think both of them are going for the satellite. I don't know. One came over. We're gonna have to jab grab this guy and show him the ground below. Our goal here is to convince decapitators to jump off or uh, um, throw them off ourselves, depending on whatever they want to do with their AI. This guy is headed toward me, it looks like. Okay, yeah. Uh, let's see if all of them want to jump off together. Not only do they take fall damage, but in the event that they teleport down here to meet you, they will uh, still die. Nice. The reason that I go back after that is because I want to fly from up high without using too much energy, because I'm going to need energy for this blast. Uh, usually you can get uh, three birds and one stone. Unfortunately, I only got one bird and one stone. Not nearly as exciting. But it was worth going for anyways. I'm gonna need our energy in a bit, so I'm gonna take a look at this guy with the AC unit. Oh, there's still one more. Shoot him. I'm gonna shoot 
this guy when he spawns in. And then for this guy, we just want to uh, bait a little bit to help him get through this doorway. And we're going to super throw him off and head over to this guy. Pick up the telephone pole. Swing. There we go. That was a pretty good call of heroes. Uh, basically, everything went according to plan, uh, except for the daily bugle sign not breaking the way I wanted it to. For the Eternal Soldier, we're going to do something a little bit ballsy and we're going to see if it works. Um, in the middle of the second unskippable cutscene, this is the first unskippable, and in the second one I'm going to hold a particular angle and we're going to see if we can do some ammo manipulation. Normally in that mission, you're supposed to destroy all of the Tesla coils so he can stop healing from them. Uh, what we do uh, now, at least, is we use the Tesla coils to kill him. So that particular angle that I did forces him to pick up a barrel at the start of the mission, and when he picks up a barrel, he can't super block, he can't dodge. Uh, all he can do is throw the barrel at you. But because there's a beam in the middle of the map, he thinks he doesn't have line of sight to do it. So we take advantage of that. And now we're going to play as Brigade, and we're going to kill Wolverine. Don't ask me for an explanation, because I don't really know. Pick it up. Good boy. Now move. Good lad. Ah, that happens. Ooh, ooh, I saw my golden ticket. Hold on. Ah, Jesus. I wanted to get a fatality. I still can. Ah, jeez. I need him to come down. He's not really cooperating with my elevation needs right now. Uh, but that's okay. There are a few ways that we can do this. The easy way, and the peasy way. That's the peasy way. Uh, usually we use a semi-truck that's on the other side of the map, but he happened to be on the left side, so, you know, I, I took matters into my own hands. But I was really close to being able to do a jab and then super grab for a finisher. It just didn't quite work out based on the elevation weirdness. Master of Magnetism. We play as Magneto, and we need to escape the same place that we just killed. Uh, what's his doodle? Uh, Brigade. Magneto can uh, range grab and then instantly throw. Very unique to him and very important for this mission in particular because you need to dislodge all of those same Tesla coils that we ignored. Oh, we used them. We used them. Um, and then once all of them are gone, they do need to actually blow up. Then the shield for this door will expire and we can make our escape. Dodge their shots by landing at a good timing. And then we're just going to fly attack through, and we're out. Not too bad. Death Incarnate is a bit of a technical mission. I like to be very careful with my positioning so that I can get, uh, you know, decently consistent outcomes. Um, there's a lot of enemies, and there's some electric walls that we can take advantage of, and a tank. We're basically going to play a little bit of uh, protect the president or whatever uh, with the tank. We want to make sure that we can keep the tank for the final section. So it's very important that we don't allow the tank to die. If we allow the tank to die, uh, it just means that the level is going to be a little bit longer because I'm going to have to kill enemies in a little bit more of a traditional fashion. Uh, we don't usually have that car over there, so I'm going to leave that car as a backup. Usually it's blowing up as you spawn into this mission. Okay, so now we just want to take out these desolators before they can blow up the tank. Nice. I want to move away from the tank because I don't want this guy to shoot anywhere near it. That car will flip out and land. Um, sometimes you can still use it, sometimes you can't. Very thankful that it didn't blow up the tank because it could have. Um, we're going to try and push this guy into the electric barrier. We failed, that's fine. Uh, let's go pick up that taxi that we left earlier um, because now we can actually use it pretty well. We're going to check out this guy. He catches it, so we'll just shoot him. Now he's forced to drop it. Even if he catches that, he's now going to blow up in the car. It almost killed him. I'll shoot him. Oh, he died. Uh, for this guy, I'm going to try and throw him, if I can get the angle right, into the barrier. Nice. That should kill him. Okay, cool. 
I'm standing a little bit too close, which means these guys are going to wake up way too fast, but that's okay. We're going to fly and grab this tank, and hopefully we don't get thrown at. Okay, nice. Then we're going to throw it at the obliterators, which should take them out easily, and it does. I'm actually going to use this tank cap uh, at this mauler, because that will help me speed things along a little bit. And I get to recycle it, which is nice. So I'm going to recycle it and see if I can throw it at multiple enemies together. Let's see. Oh, we used it to finish off one of them. Uh, he actually just got finished off. Okay. These guys are not dying uh, as well as they should. This guy is just stuck on the ground. I don't know what he's doing. He's falling and he can't get up. Odd. Right here, we're going to use a dumpster. Sometimes you can get a good lineup where you hit both of them. You saw there that I kind of staggered until I was ready to throw that because I wanted to make sure that uh, I didn't get shot. Because if you get shot, you instantly drop it. I want to make sure I don't enter rage here because it's completely overkill. I'm just going to keep mashing on this guy until he gives up. Maybe push him into the fire for some little environmental damage, and he's gone. Overall, that was a pretty fine Death Incarnate. I think the early part was really good, um, and then it just kind of fell apart because it was a little bit too close to those enemies as they were spawning, and because of that, I wasn't able to use the tank as effectively. But you do what you can, and you can what you do. Poison Steel. We don't have any more mission select, so there's no potential for error there. Um, now our goal is to defeat Hazmat. Um, sometimes he doesn't want to fly, so we do have a backup strategy for this. And that can happen too. So we're going to wait for this to blow up on him. Wow, that was weird. I'm going to do a fatality. I don't actually usually do this fatality. Um, it's not especially slow, but... Um, so usually what we try to do is bait him into jumping off the map and killing himself, but uh, sometimes he's a little bit smart and will just stand still. Um, so what we do is we throw the tank at him, and then in the event that he blocks the tank, we throw it again when his block is down. Uh, and if that still doesn't work, um, then we do a dodge attack into an aerial super grab, which is a little bit awkward to set up. Um, however, I was still able to get through that just fine, so no big deal. Killing Magneto, much, much easier. Um, the only issue is that uh, this dude thinks he can shoot you and he really, really can't. Um, he has the worst projectile in the game. Um, it's like super slow, super reactable. Um, but basically, we're just going to hover around here, similar to the Electric Man, and just kind of wait until he decides to join us over here. And when he joins us, he's not very good at flying, so he should just fall immediately. Usually it doesn't take this long for him to get over here, but these things happen. The AI is a little bit unpredictable. All right. I got a little bit nervous as I was passing by him, because if he got a grab, uh, he would have killed me. But I was spamming X, uh, and he ended up doing a drop kick anyway. What? Paragon's Revenge is a potential run killer. You'd be surprised, since it's this late into the run. But it's actually a very dangerous mission. So I'm going to be uh, pretty focused up in the early section, and we'll see what happens. Very hard mission in casual play. Blocks, there's not really much you can do besides wait. You take this guy for a tour and you can grab that barrel back there if you can. This is a really good 
PR so far. For this section, I definitely recommend taking out those barrels as soon as possible because they can rack up a lot of damage on yourself if you're not careful. And now we basically just have staggered spawns with these maulers. We just want to take them out as soon as we can. I'm using barely any energy, uh, even though I'm doing a really, really powerful combo. And here, since I have rage, I'm going to go into here because I'm going to need as much energy as I can get for this. I'm just going to wrap around the room, destroying these clone tanks as fast as possible, just with a rising air super. Just enough energy for this last one, and that kills all the enemies. And there we go. Now we're in the final mission, where we're actually going to get to show off a really cool touch of death combo that Paragon can do. Uh, I should use quotes with Touch of Death because it doesn't actually Touch of Death all of the cast, just some of them. However, it does put them into danger, uh, which is obviously really good for a fatality. So, we're coming up on time. This is the final showdown. Let's see how quickly we can kill him. Flying on that. No worries, we'll wait until he gets down to my level. Yeah, take the super up there, isn't he? Ah, okay. So, he landed directly into his healing pad. That can happen. Um, just kind of allow it. Oh, wow. That was crap. I wasn't ready for that. Okay. I'm just gonna drop her out of it. Need him to land. There we go. We hit our death combo, which is uh, staggering your super attack combo so that you can do a grab in the middle of the end of it. Oh, he was almost in danger for dying to that. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't. But since he's so close to the uh, healing chamber, I'm just going to hold him a little bit. And that's it. Time ends uh, on either the slow motion replay, seeing that Meet Your Maker complete if you don't get a replay, or the first frame of the fatality cutscene. Uh, but there you go. That's Marvel Nemesis Rise of the Imperfects in 1 hour and 22 understand. seconds. Uh, any percent, specifically, I should say. Um, my world record is uh, 58 minutes and 17 teams. seconds. I'd say my average time to complete is about an hour and five minutes. Um, but since it's a marathon, things can go wrong. I'm going to use an estimate of an hour and 15 just to keep myself um, in check, give myself a little bit of a safety net. Um, I'm going to have some backup saves in the event that there are soft locks. Soft locks are pretty rare in this game, but I do know of a few missions where soft locks can very easily happen. Um, so I'll have uh, backup saves for those specifically on my memory card. Um, and then also, uh, if it comes to it, for whatever reason, if my GameCube is not operational, I've got Dolphin I can pull up, uh, which I usually use for runs and practice. Um, and I have save states for every mission in Dolphin, so that should be an issue as well, and it would be slightly higher quality. Um, but yeah, uh, that's the game. It's really an uh, uh, interesting speed game because it's, um, it's, a, it's a fighting game or like a brawler a little bit. Um, but I think it's really cool. I think it offers a lot uh, to look at. There's only a few moments of downtime in the run. Um, there's a lot of unique techniques with individual characters. You get to see a lot of characters. Uh, and you get to see a lot of really goofy stuff that I think would be really fun for people to watch. Um, so yeah. Um, I think this would be a really cool game to have at GDQ. It's never been at a GDQ, and I'm hoping it is at this year's uh, AGDQ 2023. With that, uh, Thank you for your consideration. Thank you for watching this far. And um, regardless of whether or not I get in, I hope it's a really good uh, AGDQ. I've been watching uh, for many years now, so I'm uh, happy to submit.